When you're almost famous, you just might find yourself live on air on WATD. Hour two of Almost Famous begins now. Yes, hello, good evening. Welcome to the tiny stage hour of Almost Famous on 95.9 WATD. Introducing you to independent bands and musicians from across New England. Brought to you each week by Tiny and Sons Glass. I'm John Shea, and if you're a local musician, if you have original music you'd like to submit, go to 959WATD.com and find all the contact information. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram tonight at Almost Famous Radio, and subscribe to our podcast at AlmostFamousRadio.com. So it is the Tiny Stage Hour. We're being joined tonight by Jesse Kenny. Good evening. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? I'm great. Good to have you here. I'm glad to be here. So for those who aren't familiar with you, give an introduction. Well, my name is Jesse Kenny. I am a solo acoustic musician on the South Shore. I play all over in any bar and restaurant that will let me set up on their stage and sing. If you guys want to check me out on Facebook and Instagram, it's at Jesse Kenny Music. That's Jesse with an I, Kenny with an E-Y. And obviously the big topic over the last I don't even know how many months now is Uh, COVID-19. How has that affected your career as a musician? Oh, it's it's been an adventure for sure. I've been very thankful. I had a very busy summer. I was able to play a lot of shows outside at a couple different venues that kept me very busy. Um, I did do a lot of online Facebook Live shows because that's all we were allowed to do for a while. So I was very um, thankful to have lots of friends and family and fans that listened in and hung out with me on Facebook Live. It was it was interesting. It was a learning experience for sure, getting through that. So when you were doing those streaming shows, did you find that it came to you naturally or did it take some adjusting to make it more comfortable? You know, so we, um, my mom and I started a uh, weekly tradition called Martini Monday. Ooh, and um, every Monday good. I would do a live show on Facebook and we would make martinis and drink them and <laughs> I would sing to whoever would sign on and listen. And um I, it might have been the uh, liquid confidence, but it came pretty naturally. It was pr- it was pretty comfortable. I, you know, we kind of just eased right into it. I would play, you know, a different instrument every week. I would switch from guitar to ukulele to piano some weeks, and it was real. It was interesting. It cool. was fun. Speaking of instruments, you brought two friends tonight. Who do we have in studio? I did. I brought my guitar, Eugene. He's fantastic. I got him a couple years ago, and um, I have my ukulele named Jeremy, and all of them have names. Awesome. I want to talk about that, but let's hear a okay. song to start the night off with. What <laughs> sure. are we listening to first? All right. This is my one of my first originals. It's called Losers. All right. You can probably figure out why. <laughs> Jesse Kenny, 95.9 WATD. Good 
Lord, what could be next? But I realized something was missing He wasn't all that he appeared The truth, it was hidden behind a beard Alcoholics and liars, lovers that cheat I'm grateful, freeloaders, full of deceit Wanna be rock stars that really can't sing And the guy who forgot Take off his ring After all this mess that I've been through I'm growing afraid to ask I've had me a long line of losers But Lord, what could be next? Lord, bring someone good next I said I've had me enough of these losers Lord, bring someone good That's Jesse Kenny on the tiny stage tonight, 95.9 WATD. Talk about how you wrote that one. Oh, goodness. It is basically a chronicle of the last eight years or so. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an ongoing story. It's still ongoing, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, I've dated my fair share of losers over the years. So um, definitely some stories in that one. <laughs> Do you typically write from personal experience? All the time. It's the only songs I can write. It's it's very funny. Um, my friends and I have a joke that when I write a song, I have to have a tantrum first. So every original song that I've written, I get really mad, and I have a little bit of a tantrum like a toddler, and then I write a pretty cool song. Awesome. <laughs> so, it turns out okay. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a formula that continues to work. Yes, yeah. Tantrum, then song. That's a good album title. <laughs> right? <laughs> so how long has music been in your life? Oh, since day one. Um, my parents like to tell a story of how I was singing in perfect pitch by the time I was two. I started taking piano lessons when I was five. Um, and everything else just kind of followed. I've been performing live since I was about six years old and uh, love what I do. When did you realize that you could play music for people and make money? Very recently, actually. It took a while to get me to um, stop being so stubborn. So. I performed a lot in school and in high school. I was in a lot of elite choirs. We did a lot of work um, at Symphony Hall. And um, it wasn't until after college that I kind of realized, why, why don't I just go to an open mic, see what happens, hang out for a bit. And it was all history from there. I, um, my first open mic was at um, the 1620 Wine Bar down in Plymouth with Brent Burwell. And he kind of just showed me the ropes and told me that I needed to be out there playing songs. And a couple months later, um, the, uh, what was it? The Jones River Tavern in Kingston. I went to one of their open mics and they asked me when they, when I could book a date. And I was like, Oh, I don't, I don't play live music. I don't play shows. They're like, yeah, you do. How much time do you need? I was like, I don't have equipment or anything. They're like, okay, you need three months. How about three months? I was like, Okay, so I, I very quickly called my musician friends and got some equipment, learned some new repertoire, and just got out there. Speaking of which, who are you following on the South Shore? Who are your favorites to go out and listen to when you, when you can and when you're able to? Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm a little biased. Um, my duo partner, Carlos V. Ramos, is one of my favorites to go see. Um, we have a duo together called the Trainwrecks. And uh, when, when I'm not playing and he is, I go to his shows and I see him. Um, John Tagliere is fantastic. I love to go see his shows. Sometimes I play alongside him. I 
you actually came to see us yes, a couple weeks yes. ago. I saw you a couple weeks He's ago. He's coming up actually later on in uh, early December. He's going to be here with Erica Van Telt. Oh, good. Awesome. She's fantastic. Let's see. Who else? I mean, I get out as much as I can and see everyone. Uh, the Memory Keepers, Don and Patty Hayes, are fantastic. Um, the Quins are always a fun time. <laughs> Just any, really anyone on the South Shore. If there's live music and I have a night off, I'm there. And thankfully, now that restrictions are somewhat lifted, not, you know, obviously completely, Mm -hmm. there is some some cool live music happening. And whether it's outside in the cold, I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's live music. (laughs) It's live music. Yep. Get the sweaters on. Use your hand warmers. (laughs) <laughs> Remind us again of your online information. Of course. So you guys can find me at Facebook and Instagram at Jesse Kenny Music. That's Jesse with an I, Kenny with an E-Y. Let's do another song. What are we listening to next? Sure. Uh, this one is another one of my originals. It's called Excuse Me. Jesse Kenny on 95.9 WATD. It's the tiny stage on Almost Famous. Coffee mug day by day It makes it easier to numb the pain It makes it harder to know just what to say Because it's words sure left a solemn stain Excuse me, have you seen my life? Can you tell him I say hello? It seems my heart was like Excuse me, have you seen my smile? Can you tell me just where to go? Where the sun shines with no shadows I want my sun to shine with no shadows I live to but love to forget I love the memories that are aching in my chest I promised myself there would be no regrets But all that echoes are the lies that he professed Excuse me, have you seen my love? Can you tell him I say hello? It seems my heart was on Excuse me, have you seen my smile? Can you tell me just where to go? Where the sun shines with no shadows I want my sun to shine with no shadows Have you seen my love? Can you tell him I say hello? Seems my heart was lost a million years ago. Excuse me, have you seen my smile? Can you tell me just where to go? Where the sun shines with no shadows. I want my sun to shine with no shadows. And I say it won't happen again, but I do it again each time. And then I swear it won't happen again like a never-ending rhyme. Excuse me, have you seen my love? Can you tell him I say hello? Seems my heart was lost a million years ago. Excuse me, have you seen my smile? Can you tell me just where to go? Where the sun shines with no shadows Excuse me, have you seen my love? Can you tell him I say hello? Seems my heart was lost a million years ago Excuse me, have you seen my smile? Can you tell me just where to go? Where the sun shines with no shadows I want my sun to shine with no shadow When will the sun shine with no shadow? I want my sun to shine with no 
on the sun to shine with no shadow. Jesse Kenny on the tiny stage tonight, 95.9 WATD. Talk about that song and maybe what kind of tantrum preceded it. Oh, this, this one was a fun one. An ex-boyfriend of mine just decided to show back up in my life. And um, it, it didn't really bother me, but it brought up a lot of memories. And um, I remember writing this song, thinking about how I felt at the time when we broke up and when I finally wrote this song and played it, I remember telling everyone, it's okay, I don't feel like this now. I don't feel like this right now. <laughs> I did at some point. So um, it, was, it was a pretty crummy breakup. So looking back on that, I was like, you know what? I was like, that deserves a song. Especially with the breakup songs, when you write a song about somebody, do you ever tell them it's about them? Um, a lot of people assume that songs are about them. How often do they guess correctly? Very rarely. I've, I've had a couple people that, a um, couple guys that were uh, convinced that a song was about them, but it wasn't. You kind of keep that secret? Yeah. Um, Let them guess. Yeah. Well, Losers, the first song I played, it's, it's kind of, the people that are in it know that they're in it. I got gotcha. you. Because that one kind of spells it out. But um, if it's just a song about a breakup, I kind of keep it to myself. Gotcha. Unless, unless the person it's about comes up to me and is like, is that about me? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so it's best to stay on your good side. Yeah, don't become a lyric. That's, that's what I tell <laughs> potential dates. Don't become a lyric. Are your guitars named after anybody in particular? No, they actually aren't. Um, my guitar, his name is Eugene. Um, I bought him at Rick's Music World in Raynham. Uh, we love Rick. I love Rick. And Robin, too. <laughs> it's a great place. I love that place. And um, I walked in there. I had been searching for a guitar for a couple weeks, and I walked in, and I saw this guitar from across the room right at the entrance in the way back corner, and I said, yep, that's mine. And I hadn't even played it yet. I walked over, I picked it up, and it was way out of my price range, but it, it was love at first sight. <laughs> it was perfect. And I went, You can't say no. I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no. I had to make it work. I picked him up, and I played him, and I said, this is Eugene, and he's coming home with me. And How about Jeremy? He did. Jeremy, he didn't have a name. Uh, I know you guys can't see him because we're on the radio, but um, he has a face. He has like a little tribal face on the, on the body of him, and um, I had him sitting on the couch. I'm talking about them like they're humans, but they're not. It was resting on the couch, leaning up against the couch, and um, my dad walked by and said, hey, your ukulele has a face. Does it have a name? And I just went, Jeremy. Because I, I didn't know. It was the first thing that came to me. So <laughs> most most of my instruments that have names, it, they, they just come into my head, and that's it. Who is not joining us tonight? Uh, let's see. We have Peppermint Patty, who is bright green. It's, it's a fitting name. Um, who else? I have a blue electric guitar named Hank, um, a Les Paul ukulele named Bruce, and then I have two baritone ukuleles named Levi and Fat Louie. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the next time you're here, they can join us. Of course. Yeah, I'm sure they would li like that. I'm still talking about them like they're humans. Everyone that doesn't know me is going to think this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's radio, theater of it's, the mind. It's radio, of course. Exactly. They can picture it. So we are up against our first break here on Almost Famous. We have a lot more to talk about with Jesse Kenny and more songs to share as well. So stick around right here on 95.9 WATD and 95.9 WATD.com. We're your radio station, the South Shores 95.9 WATD. Welcome back to the Tiny Stage on Almost Famous 95.9 WATD, introducing you to independent bands and musicians from across New England. My name is John Shea. Follow us online tonight, Facebook and Instagram at Almost Famous Radio. We have a podcast, too, that you can find at almostfamousradio.com. And stream us live tonight. And if you're a local musician, you can find the contact information to submit your music at 959WATD.com. So we are on the tiny stage this hour being joined by Jesse Kenny. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thanks for making this work. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm having so much fun. Yeah, me too. 
So for those who missed the first part of the show, give another introduction as to who you are. Sure. My name is Jesse Kenny. I am a solo acoustic artist on the South Shore. I play in all of the local bars and restaurants that will have me play. If there's live music there, I'm probably there at some point. Um, you guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Jesse Kenny Music. It's Jesse with an I, Kenny with an E-Y. And remind us of your friends that are joining you in studio tonight. Yes, I have my guitar, Eugene, and I'll be uh, whipping out my ukulele, Jeremy. <laughs> so in addition to music and the other things that you do, which are numerous, you also have some Fowl friends who are listening at home tonight. Who do we have tuning in? The Fowl friends? Uh, yeah, I have six, uh, or no, five chickens. Oh, that's sad. I used to have six chickens. That was one of my pandemic projects. <laughs> we got bored. So we got some chickens and we built them a chicken coop. And uh, so uh, we have, who's listening? Cheryl Crow, Hennifer Lopez, Rebecca, Kung Pao, and Chicken Noodle. Oh. They're, they're great little birds. <laughs> How did you come up with those names? I have to ask. <laughs> And did it take a while? <laughs> it did, yeah. Um, there's a little bit of fighting about the names. Um, my, my mom wants to rename Kung Pao Ethel. It, okay. just, it just doesn't work for me. Kung Pao is really the, the right name for that bird. Um, I did, it sounds pathetic, but I did some Google research and looked up funny chicken names. And uh, that's how I found most of them. That's cool. I'm kind of a clown, so I had to go with the most ridiculous names that I could think of. Love it. Now, also, if you don't mind me saying, your day job is in the field of early childhood ed. How has the COVID-19 outbreak affected that part of your life? Oh, dear. We were closed for six months. Um, I'm the assistant director at a local child care. Um, I won't mention it on radio, I guess. Um, but it's a local daycare. Um, we actually were shut down from March 18th to September 8th. So it was quite the break. Um, it's been an adventure coming back. The kids are doing really great. We're trying to get them to social distance and wear their masks. They're doing really well with it. It's pretty smooth. That's I'm very, good. I'm very impressed with the transition. It's been very smooth going back to work, and I'm glad to be back. I love my kids, and I'm very thankful to be back hanging out with them. I now, come home with funny stories every day. <laughs> now, does that part of your life ever influence your music? You know, I do have a song in the works. I, you know, over the quarantine i was missing my students a lot so i did start writing a song about them but uh it's not quite done yet cool it's, it's not radio ready but um someday soon yeah and it's it's actually really cool a lot of the times um i'll have students show up to my gigs and i'll get them up on stage with little egg shakers i was doing um over the quarantine i was doing live on the lawn session so i live on a main road so i was setting up in my front yard and just playing to whoever wanted to stop and listen and um, I had a lot of students pull in and set up a little picnic and hang out and listen to me while I played. It was really cool. It's, it's awesome watching my two worlds collide like that. Very cool. We're chatting with Jesse Kenny here on WATD. It looks like Eugene went home for a bit and Jeremy is out. So what are we listening to he next? He sure is. I think I'll do one of my originals. This one's called Sure Thing. But my friends like to call it pancakes because everyone deserves pancakes. <laughs> All right. You ready? Now I'm curious. He's my turning out the lights and kissing me goodnight. He's hugs on rainy Fridays. He's my coffee loving king. He's my butterflies are everywhere when the phone begins to ring. Yeah, he's taking his sweet time to come and find me. Yeah, he's gonna be the reason that I sing. He's my sure thing. to 
strong and always leave a piece of me behind The feelings always seem to fade but I never see the signs I'm hopeful and I'm confident I'll someday meet the one Though right now I'm stuck in a bad soap opera rerun I know he's out there waiting somewhere If he could only hurry up, I swear He's pancakes in the morning He's my Sunday sunset drive He's my turning out the lights And kissing me goodnight He's hugs on rainy Fridays He's my coffee-loving king He's my butterflies are everywhere When the phone begins to ring Yeah, he's taking his sweet time to come and find me Yeah, he's gonna be the reason that I sing He's my sure thing My butterflies are everywhere When the phone begins to ring Yeah, he's taking his sweet time to come and find me Yeah, he's gonna be the reason that I sing He's my sure thing He's my sure thing Oh yeah He's my sure thing Jesse Kenny on the tiny stage, 95.9 WATD. What's your favorite kind of pancake? Oh, goodness. See, it's so funny because I don't eat pancakes often. Um, pancakes with sprinkles. Okay. Funfetti pancakes. That's my final answer. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Personally, I like apple pancakes. Apple pancakes. Those are good. Those yeah. are tasty, like apple cinnamon. Or blueberry. Blueberry is mm-hmm. always a top favorite. I don't know. I'm not a fan of blueberries. Hmm. You just gave me the dirtiest look. No, it's okay. <laughs> no comment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to let you down like that. That's no, okay. <laughs> so talk, talk to us about how you compose. Do you start with lyrics? Do you start with melody? How do you write your songs? So I usually start with one line. And that one line will repeat over and over and over in my head for maybe months, maybe a couple weeks. Depends on the song, really. And... Then one day it just clicks and I sit down and I find a chord progression and the rest of the lyrics just come to me. When do so, you know a song is ready? Um, I don't. I feel like they're always works in progress. There's always some way to improve upon them. Um, honestly, one of my tried and true methods is I will play one of my originals for my friend Mike Dardis. He's a <laughs> musician on the South Shore as You're well. You're a brave woman. Uh, yeah, and um, Dardis <laughs> usually tells me whether it's ready or not. I um, The next song I'm going to play, uh, I, I played it for him. The day I wrote it, he came over and I was like, you got to listen to this, you got to listen to this. And I played it and I was so proud of it. And he goes, eh, it's almost there. I was like, what? I just, it's awesome. What are you talking about? He's like, I don't know. Keep working on it. And he was right. I kept working on it and it got better. <laughs> Usually, if Dardis approves, it means that yes. it's ready. Love Mike. <laughs> Mike, if you're guy. listening, let's hang out too, man. Hey, Dardis. <laughs> Excellent. Share with us again your website and social media links. Sure. My social media, you guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Jesse Kenny Music. That's Jesse with an I, Kenny with an E Y. And the big question, when are you going into the studio to make some of these officially recorded and get them online? You know, it's funny. Um, all of my songs are copyrighted. So that was the first step. And uh, hopefully this winter. I, uh, I think with uh, the current state of things that live music is going to have to take a little bit of a break for a while. And I'm hoping that I can use that break to get into a studio and 
record these and get an EP out. So there's there's no set date yet, but um, eventually is what we're going awesome. with. Awesome. So follow the Facebook page and Instagram. Yes, absolutely. And details follow. will follow. Yes. As soon as I know the details, you guys will know them too. <laughs> Share with us your influences. Who did you listen to growing up? Who are you listening to now? Oh, goodness. And so, include some local people too, if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So um, growing up, I listened to a lot of there was a lot of Dixie Chicks involved. Um, <laughs> Dixie Chicks. Now the Chicks. Now the Chicks. I still know that. I know. I'm working on it. I still know them as the Dixie Chicks, but they are just the Chicks now. The Chicks. Bonnie Raitt was a huge one. I grew up a lot, on a lot of Bonnie Raitt. Let's see. Ingrid Michaelson is a big one for me. I think because she plays the ukulele that I, I really attach myself to her music. I think she's a fantastic songwriter. We had a chat about this not oh, too yes. long ago that you actually, did you actually work with her? I think at some point. I didn't work with her, work. but I, I, we did a concert with her at the, uh, the Life is Good uh, Festival okay. in Canada. See, that was it. And she's fantastic. So um, I kind of look up to her as a songwriter because she's just absolutely brilliant. That girl really knows how to write a song that <laughs> pulls at the heartstrings. And um, Monk Dwayne, local guy, we love Monk. I, th- I think his albums are awesome. I could listen to them on repeat. Like, I recently caved and bought the Apple Music subscription so that I could download all of my friends' music because it's not available for free. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I got to do this. I got to pay the, the fee every month and download everyone's music. So I have a lot of John Tagliari, Monk Dwayne. Andrew Giano is another one. He's, he's, he's more, great, too. He's more North Shore, but he's Awesome. Oh my gosh, that guy can write a song. He used to host an open mic in Duxbury. Did he? I believe oh, a I don't long think time ago. I knew ago. him at that point. He's one of my very good friends now and <laughs> I don't I don't see him very often cuz he's all the way up on the North Shore but he's fantastic. He writes very good songs, so if I could write songs like him, I would I would be happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do write great songs. Oh, stop it, you. So we have Jesse Kenny in studio here and let's do something else. What are we listening to next? Or this song is called Have You Met Me? And uh, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward because uh, have you met me? Exactly. <laughs> and it's Mike Dardis approved. It is. This is the one that he gave me trouble on. So it's he approves of it now. So <laughs> it's good to go. Let's hear it. All right. 95.9 W.A.T.D. Someday 
Jesse Kenny on the tiny stage, 95.9 WATD. Nice job on that. Thanks, pal. Talk about where you were when that song was written, when you oh. first had the idea. I was on my best friend Nikki's couch in her apartment, and um, her daughter has a ukulele, and I picked it up off the wall, and I said, what if we do this? Because um, I had had a dream the night before that I wrote a really killer song, and I woke up in the morning, and I couldn't remember any of it except for the fact that it had a C7 in it. So I had very little to go off of, but uh, Nikki and I always say to each other, uh, have you met me? Because we're, we're not egotistical at all, but we just like to joke around that we're fantastic. So <laughs> that's kind of our well, I motto. I can't argue with that. Oh, you know. <laughs> I know, I'm doing a hair flip for those of you that can't see. Exactly. Theater of the mind. Of course, yes. So do you have a favorite chord? A favorite chord? Oh, gosh. I don't think so. Maybe a C7. Okay, I'll I'm take gonna go that. with that for now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. It's, it's the one that I had in my dream, so. Why not? I, I, knew, I knew that there was something good behind it. It works. <laughs> Whether you're playing cover songs at a gig or you're writing original music, how do you continue to keep your ideas fresh? Um, it's tough. It's tough to keep things fresh. Um, when I'm covering other people's songs, I, I like to learn at least a few new ones every month and you know add them into my rotation. And um, I aim for a little bit of everything, a little bit of every genre while I'm performing out at gigs covering other people's songs um when i write my own the way i really keep it fresh is just not forcing myself to write but writing when inspiration hits me i feel that when i try to sit down and say okay i'm gonna write a song now it's it doesn't come naturally it doesn't it's just mundane work when i have one of those tantrums i was talking about when i have a tantrum and i have a purpose behind writing a song i find that it's a lot easier to keep it fresh, and have that passion driving the music. Now, do you ever intentionally have a tantrum just to write a song? You know, I've never tried it, but that's that's brilliant. You know, maybe I just need to start having more tantrums. And yes. Then, and then I'll just be busting out songs like nobody's business. Yeah, just you know, always carry something heavy that you can throw. <laughs> just drop something on my foot. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That'll send me into a tantrum. It'll be great. Along those same lines, when writer's block strikes... Do you have any creative ways to get around obstacles? Um, I usually go for a drive. If, I, if I'm stuck on a song and I can't figure it out, I just go on a drive and I turn the radio off and I just think and I drive and I go nowhere <laughs> at the same time and see if it helps. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just got to stop. Stop working on it. So you know? when you're driving... Yes. And there's nobody else in the car uh -huh. except for you. Yep. What's your guilty pleasure song that you put on your Apple Music or Spotify and you crank the radio up that nobody else knows about and you're too embarrassed to talk about until right now? Oh, I don't know. Oh, hmm. I don't think there's any songs I'm embarrassed by. I'm I'm very open about liking weird music. Um, <laughs> so my, my close friends know that I, I'm obsessed with this song. Uh, there's a song called Lemonade by a band called Rubble Bucket. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're out of New York. Um, it's, some, it's some funky stuff. It's, it's really cool. So I usually blast Rubble Bucket when I'm by myself <laughs> because nobody else wants to listen to it with me. <laughs> um, it's, it's really cool. If you like funky, weird, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, how would you describe it? It's like jazz, but reggae and... Like a fusion Alternative. It's like a fusion kind of thing. That's a good word for it, fusion. Their music sounds like, it sounds like when fantastic musicians get bored with all the normal stuff. So they're like, Let, let's just try some weird stuff. Let's try this. So they experiment a lot more with their music, and I think that's really cool. It's, they, they make some fantastic sounds. Love it. <laughs> we have Jesse Kenny in studio tonight. Let's do some more music. What's next? Sure thing. So this song, it's, um, it's called Slip Up. And uh, it's um, basically my perspective of being close to someone that is dealing with addiction and um, not knowing how to approach it, not knowing how to help, but knowing that there's a problem and trying to be as supportive as I can. Let's so, hear it. Right. Jesse Kenny, 95.9 WATD.
saw you yesterday was the same old bad charade saying hi and how have you been as if i don't know a thing you smile and say you're fine but it's just another bald-faced lie boy tell me what you've got to say you're gonna waste your life away oh no it was just a slip up It's like an hourglass The time's supposed to pass Sand is always rearranging But nothing else is changing You're stuck in the same old track Just waiting for the walls to crack Spend your days trapped in the glass It's time to slip out of the past It was just a slip up Oh no it was just a slip up Sorry to just stop by But did the smoke get in your eyes? Do you know that it's got to change? You can't live your life this way You're running out of faith And I'm a lot of words to say You're feeling like a sinking ship Come on, man, get a grip Oh, no It was just a slip up Life is like an hourglass The time's supposed to pass Sand is always rearranging But nothing else is changing You're stuck in the same old track Just waiting for the walls to crack Spend your days trapped in the glass It's time to slip out of the past Jesse Kenny on the tiny stage, 95.9, W-A-T-D. Was that a difficult song to write? Oh, it was terrible. My, my notebook was covered in tears. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very emotional one because it, it hits home. I have a lot of um, family and friends that have struggled with addiction, and um, I, think, I think everyone has some kind of monkey on their back, whether it be drugs or alcohol or, you know, whatever it may be. Have you shared that song with any of the people who inspired it? I have. Um, some of them were very responsive to it. Others were not so much. Okay. <laughs> um, it really depends on the person and, and where they are in their battle with it. So I, I found that a lot of people were like, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, you know, but you know, it depends on the person. In the circumstance, so. Absolutely. We are up against our final break of the night. We have a little bit more to talk about and one more song to share as well. Right here on Almost Famous 95.9 WATD, when we're back on the tiny stage in just a matter of moments. The South Shores Radio Station, 95.9 WATD. And we're back for the final time tonight here on the tiny stage. My name is John Shea, introducing you to independent bands and musicians from across New England, brought to you each week by Tiny and Sons Glass. Mike Joshua with Americanorama coming your way in a matter of moments. But for the time being, we are on the tiny stage being joined by Jesse Kenny. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I am great. Thank you for coming to 
Marshfield. Of You're course. right down the street, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm right down there. I'm in Hanover. It was a, it was a really <laughs> long commute for me. I bet it was. Much <laughs> of the traffic was horrible. Oh, yeah. It was awful. It took me hours to get here. Give another introduction, if you would. Of course. My name is Jesse Kenny. I am a solo acoustic musician local to the South Shore. I play guitar and ukulele and piano and all sorts of stuff. Um, I perform live in all sorts of bars and restaurants in the area. You guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Jesse Kenny Music. That's Jesse with an I, Kenny with an E-Y. Um, that's me. Awesome. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go into the final song tonight, if you could go back in time and tell yourself something that you know now, back when you first started playing music, what would that be? Oh, goodness. Um, so I would go back to when I was 10, starting off in guitar lessons. When I started guitar lessons, I knew a couple chords. I could, you know, play my way through a couple songs. And uh, when I started my lessons, all we did was play scales. And I was so bored. And I didn't want to play scales. I wanted to play songs. And so I quit after about two months. And... Had I known now what I would be doing professionally, I would have told little 10-year-old Jesse, just stick with it. Just learn those scales. I know it's boring. Just do it. Because now, looking back, I'm like, wow, I would have been a much better guitarist had I stuck with it. And you wouldn't have had Eugene. Maybe not. Who knows? I think Eugene still would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Before we do the final song, give your instruments another plug, even the ones that might not be here tonight. Oh, of course. I have a couple guitars named Eugene, Peppermint Patty. There's Hank. He's an electric. Um, then I have two ukuleles named Jeremy and Bruce and two baritone ukuleles named Levi and Fat Louie. All right. And while we're on the topic, we may as well give the chickens a shout out, too. Oh, of course. I love the chickens. So we have Cheryl Crow, Hennifer Lopez, Rebecca, Chicken Noodle, and Kung Pao, and Biscotti, who had to be rehomed because he was a rooster. Oh. I love him still. That happened to another bird. friend of mine had a, an unexpected rooster. Oh, he was the best. He was so snuggly. He would, like, sit on my lap and curl up and snuggle. <laughs> what kind of rooster does that? It was heartbreaking. We have time for one more song before we wrap things up. What are we closing out the night with? Oh, you guys are going to hear one of my newest originals. This one is called Hitched. Um, there's a little bit of a story behind this one, if you don't mind me telling yeah, it. Yeah, go um, for it. Oh, um, almost a year ago now. It was around Christmas time. Um, I met this great guy. We totally hit it off. We spent the whole night talking. We exchanged numbers, made plans for the next weekend. It was It was great. I thought we had a great time. The next day... The guy blocks my number. So I'm thinking, something's wrong. Like, that was such a nice night. Like, what happened? This guy cannot possibly be who he says he is. So I did a little Google search on his name. Because I figured that, like, maybe he was an ex-con. Maybe something was going on. But um, what I found was worse. And this song is about what I found. Ah, okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. All right. 95.9 WHD. Get home safely. Thanks again. And we'll catch you soon. passion both misunderstood a twosome that was made by design he was back in college wasn't making a dime feeling shy and nervous nearly all of the time watching while his buddies had all of the fun till she introduced him to a good time yeah she had curves around the edges and a star in her eye always partying like the 4th of July is here But her mouth is just a bit too wide And she gets a little sweaty when she goes outside She was serving tables at the college dive He was always drinking, just trying to get by He decided just to kiss her then For a minute he was feeling alive Now he can find her anywhere he goes She's a cheap date, yeah, everybody knows it She got him drunk on the first date and he didn't even have to buy her roses I wish I was making this up He married his beer She's the one he's going home to and calling her dear She's the one to make his worries disappear He got married to a keystone light You've got to be kidding me, right? He married his beer She's the one that's going to hold him and dry his tears Not exactly sure how I can make this he got hitched to a keystone light I dodged a bullet and I'm alright He married his beer She's the one that's gonna hold him and dry his tears Not exactly sure how I can make this clear He got
got hitched to a keystone light. You've got to be kidding me, right? He married his beer. True story, guys. Golf Digest covered it. His worries disappear He got married to a keystone light You've got to be kidding me, right? He married his peers She's the one that's gonna hold him and dry his tears Not exactly sure how I can make this clear He got hitched to a keystone light I dodged a bullet and I'm alright He married his peer. Back in 89, the love story, it was one of a kind An act of passion, both misunderstood A twosome that was made by design He was back in college, wasn't making a dime Feeling shy and nervous, nearly all of the time Watching while his buddies had all of the fun Till she introduced him to a good time 